Escape, the perfect song to start the Hades soundtrack with this iconic motif. Anyways, hi, I'm Erneko and welcome to another music challenge. The rules are simple, play all 30 Hades songs for at least 30 seconds on electric ukulele tuned in low G. Before starting this challenge, I already knew how to play some songs, but for the most part, it's fast learning, dozens of attempts that I will spare you to leave only the best in this video. And now, a few words from Human Erneko. Hello, this is Aruel Erneko. I changed the camera angle to have a better shot. So, today we are going to play this. Normally I put the soundtrack there, but I don't think anyone has noticed it. Unrelated. I received my Prushka in the meantime. Maybe I'll talk about it in another video. And last but not least... This is not clickbait. I cut myself while playing the Hades OST. I also broke my voice as you can hear. So stay tuned in this video to see when this happens. Alright, this might be a long journey, so you can put this video in the background since it's mostly music. And between each song, I would say a few words. For now, this is the hardest challenge I've done. Let's continue with... The House of Hades. start gently with a pretty easy song. Apart from the beginning, which doesn't have a measured tempo, there is no great difficulty. This video will be illustrated mostly with my footage, so feel free to comment on how bad my gameplay is. I have 180 hours of game time, beat Hades on 16 hit, but not on 32 hit yet. And you tell me someone managed to beat Hades in 64 hit last year? Bro, that's insane! For the next song, things are starting to get serious. Out of Tartarus. Troubles begins with these weird time signatures. There are many different versions. Personally, I would opt for one phrase in 4 8, one phrase in 5 8, and two phrases in 6 8, making a time signature of 21 8. A very odd structure. Hold up, let me try something here. Anyway, where was I? 
Darren Cobb, the composer and audio director of Hades, wanted strange time signatures to be a central part of the soundtrack, adding a subliminal uneasiness to music. Apparently, this 21A time signature is inspired by a Finnish band called Bartina. This theme has to be the one I heard the most. Why? Because I was shit at this game and I kept dying against Megara. Definitely felt a subliminal uneasiness during this challenge. Next one is Wretched Shades. This one got a small melodic part in the high notes which is not easy to handle. If the songs get harder and harder, I won't have any fingers left at the end of the challenge because the strings on my ukulele are made of steel and pretty sharp and pretty old. Every time my fingers slide across the strings, I die a little inside. The ukulele in question is a Rizati style electric ukulele. I'm gonna be honest, I've had it for almost 4 years, but I didn't really like it. I think the sound is out of tune, and it's difficult to use because of the steel strings. But after using it in my last song, I thought it would fit with the Hades soundtrack. I should have at least changed the strings. Lament of Orpheus This arpeggio would have been easier if I had played it with my fingers. Darren Korb actually made a video on how to play Lament of Orpheus, but instead of playing the original melody, he plays a less complex version so he can sing along. At first I thought it was a 3-4 time signature, but in his core Darren writes it in 6-8. Maybe it's easier to read like this because he plays 3 8 note arpeggios. I wish I could say more about each song, but we still have 25 left. The Painful Way So far so good, let's continue. From Olympus Bye. 
I couldn't play the arpeggio because it was too low, so instead I played the high instrument part played by the balama, an instrument found in Iran, Turkey and Greece, and one of the main instruments of the Hades soundtrack. Besides wanting to incorporate unusual time signatures, Darren chose oriental instruments to represent some aspect of this world, asking himself, what is the sound of this place? What are the instruments that might be played there? What does the music sound like? And I think that's what makes the soundtrack so immersive. I gotta say, kudos to Darren for his work on Hades. Through Asphodel. This song was a pain in the ass to play. It's not the most difficult song on the soundtrack, but there are many different melodic patterns in the first part, and the second part is not as simple as you might think. After this tricky song, I can now have a breather. Good riddance. A very pleasant song to play and listen to. Another song where Darren made a video on how to play it. The plug string accompaniment not only adds harmony, but also a melody to accompany the voice. This time it's not Darren who sings, it is Ashley Barrett on the vocals, longtime collaborator with Darren Cobb on all Supergiant games. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to play them all. Might play Transistor later. Ashley gives voice to Eurydice in Hades. When I have the choice, I always take Eurydice's room, mostly because of her items, but also to listen to her sing. I wish I could listen to this beautiful song longer. We'll find it later, in another version. Final Expense What can I say? Karen seems like a cool guy, but also one third of the soundtrack done. Mouth of Sticks.
Another w e t i m e signature. Besides being a quintuple meter, which I presume is a 5-8, there is also a change of time signature. From 5-8 we go to 9-8, however, it's neither a ternary meter nor a triple, but phrases of 5-8 and 4-8 combined. Okay, nerd time over. Like the song Out of Tartarus, it is not the measures or the time signature that matters most, it is the phrases. I didn't think I would be able to play some 21-8, but it's pretty natural to play when you get used to it. Associated with exclusive rhythmic claves like the snare marking the beginning of new phrases and the style of music that Darren Corp describes as Mediterranean Prog Rock Halloween Music. I understand the Mediterranean Prog Rock vibe, but not sure about the Halloween part. Primordial Chaos. Does it count? Because there are no stringed instruments in this song. Comment below if you validate it. Uh, yeah. I have nothing else to say. Anyways, I dread the next one. The Bloodless. The Barge of Death. Always a pleasure to get on board during a run. A great challenge to take on, and the song rocks. But playing this song, that's another story. I've talked previously about those painful steel strings, and that every time my fingers slide across them, it hurts like hell. Now, it would be funny if there was a song where you had to slide on these fucking strings all the time. At one point I was even afraid of cutting my fingers that I had to continue the next day. We can say that, in the end, I got out of the part of death, bloodless. At least for now. Scourge of the Furies This song might be the most complex of this soundtrack in terms of rhythmic meter. Starting with a basic 4-4, then an 11-8 to move on to the next part, with repetitions of 5-8 as a transition, and finally a 21-8 like out of Tartarus. While doing this challenge, I ask myself, why do I love this soundtrack so much? And the answer came by revisiting the songs. This soundtrack reminds me of my hard rock metal phase. Yeah, it might be a surprise for some, but I listened to a lot of Disturbed, Rammstein and System of a Down before, to name a few. And taking a closer look at some songs, we can find similarities in the aesthetic. For example, The Painful Way and Morgenstern by Rammstein. Or the song we're listening right now, Scourge of the Furies and Question by System of a Down. 
Feel free to listen and compare for yourself. Whew, this song was hard. But thanks to my metal head past, I managed to get through it. Him to Zagreus. <laughs> Not easy to play without a tempo, but with this song, we are halfway through the Hades soundtrack. Field of Souls. this song, I decided to play it without a pick. I thought it was funny to play both octaves at the same time, although in the original song it is played by two separate instruments. Mm, thinking about it, many songs in the Hades soundtrack has this octave writing style to add depth in the range, stereo, or maybe it gives an early music side. Anyways, not gonna bore you. It's time to fight the Hydra. River of Flame Goodbye Asphodel, and hello Elysia! One more try. Rage of the Myrmidons. Remember when I said that Scourge of the Furies might be the most complex song of this soundtrack? Well, we have a contender! Starting with a 3-4 that doesn't sound like a 3-4, a solo that alternates 13-8 and 11-8, then a transition that alternates 7-4 and 6-4 to finish on a common time. So, in your opinion, which one is the most complex, Scourge of the Furies or Rage of the Myrmidons? Comment below. 
To return to the ladder, besides the changes of time signatures, it's a pretty difficult song to play, especially the melodic part. At least, I really like how the last part sounds. Very airy. Anyways, the hardest part is yet to come. The Exalted This song is even harder than the previous one! Ah! But it is less complex, since it's just a ternary structure. One of the rare songs where you can watch Darren produce it step by step in the No Clip documentary about Hades. If you haven't seen it yet, you should check this out. I learned a lot of things that helped me make this video. Link in the description. I don't have much else to say, other than this song sounds really good. Last words. This time I opted for a more funky style. As the beginning of the music didn't provide much material to play, I moved on to the second half and there the material was more interesting, which made me want to play these groovy riffs. Okay, silly time over. Now, shit is about to get real. The King and the Bull. <laughs> I have a confession to make. Did you know that most of the songs from the Hades soundtrack are divided into two parts? First, the clean acoustic part, and second, the distorted electric part. This helps create dynamics between normal fights, breaks, and bosses. Normally, I should have recorded these two parts for each song, but I was running out of time, and the video was gonna be even longer than it is now. So, in a nutshell, I'm not playing the second part of the King and the Bull here, but the first part. That's why I don't play palm muting riffs, and I'm not totally in sync with the music. End of confession. I know it's not a big deal, but at least, it was a good excuse to talk about the specificity of this soundtrack. Lament of Orpheus
I've already praised the songs of this soundtrack, but the lyrics are also incredible. We return to this song which tells the tragedy of Orpheus and Eurydice. In these Greek mythologies, and overall, in the game Hades, a recurring theme is Death is inescapable. Whether you are a god or a shade, Orpheus ventured into the underworld to bring his wife Eurydice back to life, but failed, separated from his beloved forever. So he wrote this song, Lament of Orpheus. Not gonna lie, this song goes hard. Gates of Hell First listen, this song seems to be the least interesting of this soundtrack. <sighs> but it would be a shame to stop there. While Tartarus, Asphodel and Elysium have more than three songs to illustrate them, the Temple of Styx only has one. And although the last area is the least favorite, because of environmental hazards, enemies and poison, the song Gates of Hell is pretty solid and illustrates well the Temple of Styx. The following part is my personal interpretation. Tartarus is a great introduction to the soundtrack and opts for light percussion and folk instruments to give this Mediterranean prog rock vibe. Asphodel stands out with its heavy percussion. This snare drum that resonates like an echo in the intro is comparable to the sound of exploding magma. Elysium uses synth pads, like a pedal note in the bass or a lead in the medium high, to create an airy sound. And finally, the Temple of Styx is a mixture of Tartarus percussion and Elysium synth pads, but adds a metallic percussion reminiscent of the Gates of Hell. It's as if this song is the accumulation of you crossing into Hell. And this C chord played in repetition is like a foresight of what comes next. The end of your journey. God of the Dead. Remember, the first time I recorded my gameplay on Hades, it was the first time I beat the final boss, Hades. I was in Elysium when I started recording, and I felt confident to finish the run. The final fight is not very pretty to watch. It was just brute force, and it passed. At least playing the ukulele was much easier than playing the controller, because the Hades theme was already in the first song, No Escape. A terribly effective motive that we find throughout the soundtrack, which is the very essence of the sound identity of Hades. Although beating Hades the first time is an achievement, in this game, there will always be worse to beat you. Final Expanse On 
music side, everything's fine. This time Darren really went for a funky vibe on the electric guitar. Although most of the soundtrack is quite consistent, some songs are atypical. For last words, Thanatos' theme, we have EDM. And for final expense, Karen's theme, we have dubstep. Uh, to be honest, they sound a bit cheesy. But there is something transcendent about using a more modern style to these characters, especially Thanatos, who is the embodiment of death. Now, on the fighting side, holy shit! I just wanted to borrow some money, and in exchange, I am sent directly to Brazil! And you know what's harder than beating Hades the first time? Beating Charon in Tartarus, with one quarter of your build done. I had to do it for the video, because... I hadn't recorded a fight with Charon before. Anyways, let's resume after beating Hades. The first time I finished a run on Hades really blew my mind. First, you are greeted with this sublime music, played by an orchestra recorded at the Abbey Road Studios in London. I already appreciated the authenticity of this soundtrack with the use of traditional instruments, but this is the icing on the cake. Second, you are greeted with this sunset. And like 99% of people, I took a screenshot. And finally, you are greeted by Persephone, Zagreus's mother, the main girl of Hades. I mean, greeted is a big word since she tells Zagreus to get out at first contact. Because she didn't recognize him, she thought her son died at birth. Her heart soars knowing he live, then it breaks, because Zagreus cannot stay out of the underworld. Such a heartbreaking scene, with such a beautiful theme. This song announces the end of a run, but also the beginning of a new adventure. The idea of a narrative roguelite is so refreshing to progress in the story and gives you the motivation. Defying the underworld to find your mother back and trying to change things step by step. Remember the fate of Orpheus and Eurydice? During our adventure, we also meet other characters such as Achilles, Sisyphus, Patroclus, all having experienced a fate worse than the other. If eternity exists, who would like to live forever in suffering? The game gives you the chance to rewrite the story of these characters and that Zagreus can make the difference, helping family, friends, and more. Maybe this is why Zagreus is such a good character, because he is the god of blood, source of life, death, but above all, humanity. Anyways, he is one of my favorite songs from this soundtrack on the coast. But in my opinion, nothing can top the next one. In the blood.
Finally, I was able to play my favorite song from this soundtrack, although it doesn't sound as good as I thought. I mean, the mastering is already so meticulous in this song, with the guitar, bass, drums, orchestra and vocals. Adding an electric ukulele won't make it any better. Anyways, making a video about Hades in 2024 is kinda weird, right? That's because I only played it last year, and I can't believe I missed this. Better late than never, right? And now, Hades 2 can be released at any time, so I can't wait to play it and listen to a new soundtrack by Darren Korb. Although this video is the longest I have made, I opted for a format where I talk less and play more. And I think it's better like that, but next time I will make a shorter video, so my upload schedule is less chaotic. I'm not a good YouTuber at all because I forgot to ask you to like the video, share it, subscribe, or make yourself a chalky milk. I mean, do what you want, you have free will. If you like this format, tell me in the comments some soundtrack I should play and analyze. In the meantime, I have other videos to make. You can find me on these social if you want more information, sometimes some random ukulele covers. Now you must be wondering... When did I cut my finger during this challenge? Well... What the fuck? I'm bleeding. The theme of the most difficult boss in the game. The third phase of Hades. This song could have been even harder if I had decided to play the solo part of Masahiro Aoki and Daisuke Kurosawa. But unfortunately, I'm not a shredder, so I just played the accompaniment. And as you can see, even this part is challenging. After learning and playing 28 songs in 3 days, my index finger hurt like hell. But after playing In The Blood, I was so excited to finish this soundtrack because I was getting to the end. I realized I cut my finger the moment I saw the blood coming out. I hope it's not too graphic for YouTube. I put a bandage on and tried again. And again. And again. I just needed one good take of The Unseen Ones. Man, beating the final phase of Hades was as hard as playing his entire soundtrack. But musically speaking, this is the hardest challenge I've done. Oh yeah, there's one song left. We are coming to the end of the video, and I realized that I talked a lot about the music of the game, but not the game itself. Hades is fantastic and highly replayable. To vary the visuals, I played with all six weapons. Some gameplays are almost one year old, some were recently recorded for the video. My favorite weapon is probably not your first pick. It is Exagriff, the adamant rail with the aspect of Lucifer. Now the build. For upgrades, I opt for triple bomb, very important, and optimally combined with Greater Inferno. This allows me to finish off most enemies in one attack easily. For the primary attack, I chose Poseidon's boon to push enemies into the Hellfire Bombs, and for the dash, the classic boon of Athena, to protect myself, repair the projectiles, and trigger the bombs. Yeah, I just wanted to share my weird build before leaving. I didn't expect to be able to play the whole soundtrack, 
but it's done. Including the last song. This time, I'm not gonna play it, but sing it. At first I wanted to try playing and singing at the same time, but the song is quite difficult to sing, especially for someone like me who has a deep voice. So I separated the voice and the ukulele. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching, take care of yourself and see you next time. Hi, editing Enrico here. Apparently this section of the video got copyrighted for a good riddance cover. Might be a scammer abusing claims. So unfortunately, I gotta remove this part. I'll be honest, it's not like the video gonna make me a fortune, but making a 48 minutes video for months and not being able to receive a cent for less than 5% of the video, that's bullshit. So this is what's gonna happen. I will post the last part in another video next week and if they want to claim this video, I don't care, I just want to post it, since I don't sing too badly, to finish the challenge. Anyways, see you next week then.